41 people died at Dean's Avenue Mosque, seven at the Linwood Avenue Mosque, and one person has since died in hospital. Over 40 people are being treated for injuries at Christchurch Hospital. They have all been identified, and those names have been shared with members of the community. Two of those are in critical condition. And also, a five-year-old child has been transported today to Starship Hospital in Auckland. This is the only transfer that has taken place. I am advised that the hospital is well equipped and coping well. There are available beds and seven acute theatres for those in need. Pathologists from throughout the country have made themselves available and we have additional pathologists coming in from Australia. Three people have been arrested in relation to this event. One Australian citizen will appear in court today charged with murder. This individual has travelled around the world with sporadic periods of time spent in New Zealand. They were not a resident of Christchurch. In fact, uh, they were uh, currently based in Dunedin at the time of this event. Inquiries are ongoing to establish whether the other two who were arrested were directly involved with this incident. The fourth person who was arrested yesterday was a member of the public who was in possession of a firearm, but with the intention of assisting police. They have since been released. Police are working to build a picture of anyone who might be involved in all of their activities prior to this event. None of those apprehended had a criminal history either here or in Australia. And as I said last night, they were not on any watch lists either here or in Australia. I want to be very clear, though, that our intelligence community and police are focused on extremism of every kind. Given global indicators around far-right extremism, our intelligence community has been stepping up their investigations in this area. The individual charged with murder had not come to the attention of the intelligence community, nor the police for extremism. I have asked our agencies this morning to work swiftly on assessing whether there was any activity on social media or otherwise that should have triggered a response. That work is already underway. Today, as the country grieves, we are seeking answers. I want to speak specifically about the firearms used in this terrorist act. I'm advised that there were five guns used by the primary perpetrator. There were two semi-automatic weapons and two shotguns. The offender was in possession of a gun licence. I'm advised that this was acquired in November of 2017. A lever-action firearm was also found. While work is being done as to the chain of events that led to both the holding of this gun licence and the possession of these weapons, I can tell you one thing right now. Our gun laws will change. There have been attempts to change our laws in 2005, 2012, and after an inquiry in 2017. Now is the time for change. There are obviously questions being asked of how this person was able to enter the country and undertake this act of terror. I have instructed, instructed ODES to report to Cabinet on Monday on this sequence of events with a view to strengthening our systems on a range of fronts, including but not limited to firearms, border controls, enhanced information sharing with Australia and any practical reinforcement of our watch list processes. I want to come now to what people can expect over the course of the day and beyond. The safety of New Zealanders is our highest priority. 
New Zealand police remain on high alert. Christchurch res residents are strongly urged to stay home if possible and stay safe. Please monitor the police website and social media for further information. If you see something suspicious, then please call 111 immediately. A number of events are being held across the country today and there will be an increased police presence. Police have additional patrols out on the streets of Christchurch to reassure the community. They have flown in 45 additional police staff to Christchurch with a further 80 staff arriving today. The additional police staffing includes public safety teams, detectives, tactical specialists and intelligence support. Staff from other DHBs have offered support as required. There will be additional support provided in Christchurch for mental health and psychosocial needs. If anyone needs to speak to someone or if they're feeling distressed in any way, I encourage you to call or text 1737. There are extra staff available. That number to call or text again is 1737. And that line is available to anyone, whether they've been directly involved in these incidents, whether they're residents or Christchurch or not, anyone in New Zealand who's feeling any kind of distress. People, the police are aware of distressing material relating to this event being online and are reminding people it is an offence to distribute objectionable material. I want to touch briefly on activity to date and the response that occurred yesterday. So just to recap, police immediately secured the areas involved and ensured that people were kept safe, including schools and offices being locked down. Police made arrests swiftly. And as I've said, a man will appear in court this morning. Defence specialists quickly moved to assist police to make the improvised explosive devices safe. I want to make special mention of those who are involved in both the uh, parts of the operation involving disarming explosive devices, but also undertaking the arrests themselves. Many of you may have seen the footage of the arrests and I can only describe it as an act of bravery on behalf of all New Zealanders and an act that showed very little regard for their own personal safety. I'm sure everyone in New Zealand wants the acknowledgement of the police, but particularly the police officer who made that critical arrest yesterday. I also want to acknowledge ambulance staff who uh, many will have seen acting swiftly under horrific conditions uh, and all medical staff who continue to work uh, with those who are injured. New Zealand Defence Force at Burnham Camp yesterday were put on standby to assist police in Christchurch. Mosques around the country were provided with advice from police to help keep them secure and advice to remain closed. This advice continues, as does the police presence at mosques around the country. The national threat level was raised to high, and that remains. This triggers a number of actions to help keep, keep people safe, such as increased aviation and border security. A number of specialist family liaison staff were deployed. Close liaison has been established with the Muslim community and other key people in Christchurch. Police and the wider government will be working with leaders and members of the Islamic community to provide assistance, reassurance and support. An 0800 number established to register missing persons, 0800 115019, and a website, Restoring Family Links. MFAT are acting as a liaison point for foreign governments. Consular representation for any foreign nations involved is being provided. At this stage, we involved, understand those involved include Pakistan, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, Indonesia and Malaysia. MFAT staff are dealing with offers of assistance and of course receiving a significant number of condolence messages. Deputy Commissioner Māori and Ethnic Services Wally Homaha has travelled to Christchurch alongside 15 additional ethnic liaison officers to support the community. These specialists will work alongside local staff to support the families involved. 
They are assist assisting to repatriate them with their loved ones in a way that is consistent with Muslim beliefs, or taking into account these particular circumstances and obligations to the coroner. I want to finish by saying that while the nation grapples with a form of grief and anger that we have not experienced before, we are seeking answers. After this media conference, I will board a Defence Force plane and travel to Christchurch. I will have other political leaders with me, including the Leader of the Opposition. As is the entire nation, we are all unified in grieving together. Prime Minister, specifically, what changes would you like to see the gun laws? Where did they fail? Well, obviously, as I've said, that that's a chain of events that we are um, currently analysing. Uh, but the mere fact when people, of course, hear that this individual was uh, acquired a gun licence uh, and acquired uh, weapons of that range, then obviously I think people will be seeking change, and I'm committing to that. And also travelled to Pakistan after obtaining that gun licence and returning to New Zealand. Um, the more we learn about this person, the harder it is to understand why he wasn't on the radar of our intelligence agencies. Was there a failure? of our intelligence agencies. Again, I reiterate that this individual was not on the radar uh, of either Australian intelligence agencies or New Zealand intelligence agencies. Yes, he had travelled to a range of countries, sporadically been in and out of New Zealand for periods of time, uh, but I've asked uh, on Monday to convene, again reconvene, all those agencies who will be able to piece together the nature of that travel, the sequence of events in terms of obtaining gun licences, and then shortly thereafter, the gun licence was obtained in November 27, uh, 2017. The purchasing of weapons began in uh, December 2017. So obviously a sequence and chain of events there uh, that began um, some time ago, but those are all uh, issues that we are seeking answers around. Are there any white supremacists on our terror watch list or have we been too focused on Islamic extremists? As I've said, that given the rise of uh, extremist views um, by those who hold uh, um, uh, ideology that I can only describe as violent and extreme, uh, our uh, agencies here in New Zealand uh, have stepped up the work uh, that was being done in that area. But again, that did not result in this individual being on any kind of watch list. How concerned are you about rhetoric around the Global Migration Compact? How concerned are you that that is fueled? If you look at my comments at the time, uh, I have always been concerned about that kind of rhetoric. But everyone should be. Uh, rhetoric uh, of racism, division, extremism has no place, not only in New Zealand, uh, but I would say in a society as a whole. What message do you have to the community members who might be angry yeah. um, and who might be thinking about retaliation or other such actions? I don't think that is in keeping with their values. Um, uh, I know that they have questions. Those are questions that we are directly asking agencies. We are all working together to get those answers as quickly as we can. Uh, and as I said in my opening statements, if there was any suggestion that these individuals should have been known to us, uh, we are looking into that uh, as we speak. Our duty was to keep everyone who is in New Zealand and calls New Zealand home safe. That has not occurred here, so questions must be answered. Well, you tell us about your phone call. category of gun license for the firearm to use in the attack? That is my understanding. That seems to be an incredibly high threshold, how, or a specialised category. So how, how is it that he could get um, a licence like that, a semi-automatic weapon? Uh, on my understanding is he hold, held a Category A gun licence. And again, I, I preface this that my advice currently is that he, under that gun licence, was able to legally acquire the guns that he held. That will give you an indication of why we need to change our gun laws. Can you, you tell us about your conversation with yes, the sorry, Benedict. Would, would you like to see semi-automatic weapons banned? Uh, that's certainly one of the issues that I'm looking at uh, with imme immediate effect. Um, 
I've asked for advice yesterday on all of these questions. Do you consider a buyback program like in Australia? Again, a bit too early for, for me to say at this point. Uh, but again, uh, as soon as New Zealanders hear that someone was legally able to acquire, as I'm advised, uh, those weapons and carry out this event, uh, that will raise enormous questions with our gun laws. Uh, and that is why we will respond swiftly.